An LED baton light bought from AliExpress for about £3.50 inclusive. I got this to take apart and see what it's like inside. So it says LED purification fixture. Not sure where the translation went wrong there. But what you get inside here is a classic little baton light. Sometimes they call them grill lights for some reason, but it's got the usual little metal clips that can go in to actually attach it to a surface. But in this instance, it's also got double-sided tape. Unfortunately, it's got double-sided tape on the back of where the uh, the heat dissipation uh, surface is for the uh, LEDs. It's got the two leads and a little click-on, click-off button. Let me apply 12 volts to this right now. I have tested this at various voltages. It's important to note that it is optimally designed for 12 volts because when put on at 12 volts, it dissipates about 10 watts. It draws just under an amp. And if you were to use this on a solar panel and sealed lead acid battery system where the battery got charged to about 13.8 volts, the current at 14 volts is 1.237 amps and that equates to about 17 over 17 watts, which would actually potentially overheat this. So it's one of these things that if you're going to use it on a system like that, I'd probably recommend a couple of diodes in series just to drop the voltage a little bit. Let's open this up. I should mention that it does start lighting up at 7.4 volts. That does suggest it's got the series clusters of three LEDs. Now, I don't see any screws in the back here. I don't know if this is glued together. It's uh, clipped together, apparently. OK. And it's got the usual arrangement that this slides out. This also looks strangely sort of filming this. I think there's a protective film in this. Let me just, uh, I'm not sure. I thought initially that this may actually come out, but it's all moulded in together, like these lights tend to have. Does the other end come off? Not easily. Okay, this is the end we want of. So what I'm seeing here is multiples of nine LEDs with a resistor per three LEDs. That's good. I thought it may be going to be using one resistor for the whole lot, as sometimes happens, but it has divided it down. Um, and there's a little switch in the end. Uh, I wonder how, technically speaking, based on how sensitive this is, you could also use it as a nightlight if you stuck. I'm going to try that. I'm going to put a resistor across this. One moment, please. Continue the experiment. So at 12 volts, if you put a resistor across that switch, even at a level of something like 3.3 thousand ohms, the current draw is about one milliamp, and it's actually still quite bright. It's a sort of nightlight. In fact, it's really surprisingly bright. I'm going to keep going now. I'm going to keep uh, going higher. So this is actually 33K now in Sears with, and it's still visibly lit. Let's bring the LEDs out. I'm just playing about here. I'm just messing about here. Uh, let's see how far I can go with this before they're... This is the highest it goes to. It's one mega ohm, and they're actually still visibly lit. That is ridiculous. Uh, so that's an interesting option. That if you wanted uh, light... Now, watch your eyes. I'm going to bring the light back. So this does kind of introduce the possibility that if you had one of these running a 12 volt supply, you could have the switch to turn it on and off. But if you put a resistor across that, it could run at just a really low current, like one milliamp, and it could provide low level ambient lighting as well, just as a 24-7 sort of security or, or just comfort light. Uh, I have tested this. There, there is a film across this to protect the... Uh, the front. Oh, it feels sticky now. It's the usual construction. Nothing really radical to say about it. It's nice that they're driving the LEDs properly. Uh, I haven't worked out how much power that is, though. I right, tell you what, I'm going to have to work out the power now. One moment, please. The computations have been done. The current through each LED is roughly 38 milliamps. Uh, that gives a typical power dissipation per LED of 
uh, 0.038 mA times round about 3 volts voltage drop across the LED, about uh, 0.114 watts between across the LED, each LED. It has potential. The adding those diodes in series will reduce the dissipation. It depends for application. Maybe you want the full intensity, but if certainly if you're running off the rechargeable lead acid battery, I would recommend adding those because it is going to push these LEDs a lot harder. And it is relying, as these things do, on the heat dissipation of this plastic plate just loosely slid into this channel here. So the thing is going to last a lot longer if you underrun it. Um, and I like that's a nightlight idea. Is there anything else to say about this? Not really. It's useful. Uh, I could see in the future if there were power outages, then having a 12 volt system, it would be quite useful to have something like this. Uh, but certainly if you live in a camper, a trailer, or if you want extra lights in the back of your vehicle, this looks as though it would certainly fit the bill. But I would say just add those extra series diodes in just to nudge the voltage down from that sort of peak charging voltage. Um, to actually make it make the LEDs last a lot longer. And they should give a decent length of life. But it's very neat. It's typical construction. It's what you'd expect. So that is it. It's uh, the strangely named LED purification fixture. Strange. That, I don't know why they call it that. Uh, but that's it. A very simple arrangement. Uh, multiples of three LEDs with a resistor per LED, just like the LED tape. And just a little switch at the end and everything just on this little aluminium panel that then goes into that, uh, that strip light. Fairly standard and absolutely fine.